Hello, today is January 25th, and in this video, I'm going to explain how the repricing settings work in Price Shack. Now, first step when we do repricing is we look at all the offers available on the marketplace, and we narrow it down to the ones that are considered acceptable using offer selection settings. I'm not going to talk about that in this video. I'll go into more detail in another video. But you should know that what we're doing is looking at all the list, all the offers on a marketplace, selecting down to the best one that is considered acceptable for you. If there's none that are considered acceptable, we take the item out of stock. But anyway, for the purpose of the rest of this video, let's assume we have one offer from the marketplace. That's called the source price, and that's what we're going to use for all the math that I'm about to go through. So the repricing settings are set on each individual source. So a lot, of, a lot of users will only source from one place. And in that case, you just need to click on the place you're sourcing from and set them up there. You don't need to worry about all these other options in here. If you do use multiple sources, then you can click on each of these and set them up on a per source basis. Quantity in stock is the number of items to be available on your destination, for example, on your eBay listing, if the listing is in stock on the source. So pretty straightforward. If it's in stock on Amazon, for example, and you want it there to be considered four on your, uh, on your eBay listing, you just put four in here, etc. cetera. Um, for that setting, you may also want to keep in mind that we have this really cool advanced setting that's on by default, where we'll actually lower that number if, if there's a limited quantity in stock on Amazon, if there's only two on Amazon and you've got four in there, we'll actually set your eBay listing to only have two available so that you don't oversell it. Now I'm going to get into the actual numbers here that determine how your price is set. And this happens in two stages. Stage one is we look at the source price and we determine your margin. Your margin, we're using this term to mean the actual amount of profit that you'll get to take home after your eBay final value fee, after PayPal fees, after any fees on your, on your particular marketplace, and also of course after the price of the item that you're buying the actual goods that you're selling. And then stage two is we take the source price, which we know from before, and we take that margin and we determine your listing price. So for example, your eBay listing price. And that is going to be where we take into account the final value fees, the PayPal fees, everything else. So first let me tell you how we take the source price and determine what your margin should be. This looks daunting, but it's really simple. I'm going to cover two cases. Uh, first, let's say you want to just get 10% of whatever the source price is. So a $50 item on Amazon, let's say you want to make $5. A $100 item on Amazon, you'll make $10. You just put in 10% here. That's all you need to do. Save settings. That's it. You'll make 10% of the source price everywhere. Uh, another really simple configuration, let's say you want to make $1 on every sale, regardless of the source price. You put in $1 here as margin fixed. Fixed means it's going to be the same number regardless of the source price. Save your settings, and that's it. Really simple, fixed percentage, fixed margin. And then if you want to have some combination of the two, you can do that too. So let's say you want to make at least a dollar on everything, but then also you want to make more money on the more expensive things, so you put in 10%. So in this example, let's say you're selling a $100 item. We'll take 10% of $100, that's $10, add $1, so we'll make sure you get an $11 margin on that item. So you can set up any combination of these two. You don't have to use them both. You can set one to zero. Um, pretty straightforward. Now, there's another thing. Maybe you set this up and you've also, you want to be careful because maybe the really cheap items, you want to make sure you're earning some minimum amount. Um, where it's worth your time and hassle to fulfill the order. So you can do that as a sort of safety net by setting this minimum margin here. So maybe you've got 10% and zero, and now it's a little scary because let's say you sell something for $10 and you're only making a dollar, but you, you want to make sure you have at least something to make it worth your time. You put in $2 here, and then what we do is we take the margin percent, add the margin fixed. That's, that's your normal margin. We compare that to the minimum margin, and we take whichever one's higher. So uh, in this case, just thinking about it, anything that's under $20 will be using the, the fixed margin of $2 for minimum margin, and then anything above $20 will go down to the margin percent here. There's one other really advanced aspect of this, which is you can do repricing ranges. 
You don't have to use this. You can leave it just like it is, really simple. But you might decide that you wanna have a really advanced formula where cheap items, maybe you wanna have a 10% margin. And then you can click this plus button and add another range. And you put in the min price here, and that's the point where this range starts taking effect. So let me show you an example. In this configuration, I have all items where the source price is between zero and $30. Those will give me a 10% margin. And then anything over $30 will give me a 5% margin. Again, we take that margin, we compare it to the minimum margin, and we take whichever one is higher. Um, you can add as many ranges as you want. Be careful to keep them in order. You're gonna be really confused if you were to put a higher number here than here. It's gonna make it confusing. So always put these in order, put your lower numbered ranges on top and your higher numbered ranges on bottom. That's how the range repricer works. It's really powerful. It lets pretty much everybody get the formula that they want in there. You don't have to use all the power if you don't want it. You can simply put in a 10% margin here and then maybe a minimum safety net and you're good. That is how we determine, that's how we go from your source price, which remember we are taking the offer, the lowest priced offer that's acceptable with your offer selection settings. That's how we go from that to your margin. Now I'll show you how we go from the margin and the source price to your listing price. And this math gets a little advanced. You can stop watching the video here. You've got everything you need to know to set this up. But if you're curious, then keep watching and I'll show you how we compute that. So what we do here is we take into account all the fees. That's your, if for example, you're selling on eBay, you've got a PayPal fee. It's got a fixed part, 30 cents generally, and then 2.9%. And then also you've got an eBay final value fee of 10%. So let's say you've got an item that the source price is $40. And let's say you've got a 10% margin percent. So you're going to have a margin of $4. Okay, so we have a source price of $40. And then we've got a margin of $4. Now, you might think we just set it to $44 on your eBay listing, but that's not gonna be enough because when you subtract out your 10% final value fee, your PayPal fee, you're actually gonna be losing money on this item. So the way we fix that is we do start with $44. You need to have $44 after the fees and we add in the PayPal fee, the fixed portion of the PayPal fee, and we divide it by 0.4. 871, okay? A little crazy, but this is what we divide it by to make sure that after all the fees, it will give you $40 to buy the item with and $4 to keep as your margin in this example. Now, where does this 0.871 come from? Well, this is if you take one and you subtract out the 10% eBay final value fee and the 2.9% PayPal percentage fee. And you can change these here in your advanced settings. So for example, if you've got a top rated seller status, you've got a discount on your final value fee. Well, you might want to come in here and account for that discount and that'll lower all of your prices somewhat. One other thing in here is this include 40 cents AO fee. You can click that and then we'll also add in here the 40 cents fee that we, we charge to do the automatic ordering. And so really cool way to make sure that you're just always earning exactly this margin that you've set up in the settings here on each order. That is how the repricing settings work in here. One more thing, you can use this roundup feature. That's an advanced feature. A lot of people like to put 99 in there. And what we do then is, is we run this math here. I'll actually do this example. Okay, that's 51.32. So this would, this would be a $51.32 eBay listing price. And then the very last st stage is if you do decide to use this roundup feature, uh, we would round it up to $51.99. Okay, so that's how this works. I'm going to put in the description a little calculator you can play with that might help you get an even better idea of how your prices might work out. I know it's a little tricky to understand all of the mathematics, but the important thing is is that you just set the margin here the way you'd like it and then you can trust Price Jack to figure out exactly what to set your listing price at 
to make sure you earn that margin. So thank you for watching and thanks for using Price Jack.